So when you go to the grocery store with the kit, they all want uh, candles, chocolates, everything. But if you say to, to your kid, uh, choose one or two, he, he or she will not be able to, to choose everything from that store. So that is the difference between love and want. And then I always say to my clients and to myself also, give yourself 24 hours of time. Welcome to Personal Finance Cat, where I share my personal take on personal finance. Hi, Maya. Welcome to the show. Hi, hi. Nice to be here and thank you for having me here, Handy. Of course. of course. Thank you for coming on the show. To start with, can you tell us about your journey into the world of financial education? Because you're a finance teacher and what inspired you? Perfect. So uh, I started in year, I don't know, 2008 when the previous economic crisis happened. And that was basically my moment of truth for me. I lost money wherever I could. So there were so much of wrong decisions and um, my trust to financial advisors was just, just disappeared. So I needed to start teaching myself how to handle money first and then how to start investing. My biggest motto, my, my biggest motivation was that when the next crisis will arrive, I will, I will be prepared. That's great. What are some of the common challenges you think people face when it comes to managing their finances and how would you typically help them overcome these challenges? Uh, I need to say I started my financial journey with so being a mom of three and I, I was not stay at home mom, but I was working for four hours only. So I had a low salary uh, and I needed to become a professional in handling money. That's one thing. And that, that I think is the biggest issue today, because in the world of capitalism, when we want everything right now, uh, we just need to, to put some short sacrifices in terms of thinking of our future first, not only present moment. And this was basically my beginning journey. So yes, definitely handling budget was the first thing for me, uh, realizing the difference between wants and needs that we don't need anything, everything at uh, this moment particular. And then, of course, I started investing. I learned the, the long-term investing process so that I can really talk about this today. I would mention one more thing. Um, by my background, I'm not a financial specialist, which means that I can speak to people from my experience. I'm an, uh, I have a, an economic background, but not from financial terms, but from terms of marketing, which means that I, I explain whenever, whenever I talk about money, I explain the easy way and people like that because um, yeah, financial industry, industry make, makes it just complicated, <laughs> everything around money. Well, yeah, of course. Can you talk about that a little bit? What was your background before becoming kind of a financial teacher and how that experience helped you building this business? So I started as an entrepreneur. So first I was an employer, then um, employee, then I started my own um, journey. So my entrepreneurship journey. And during uh, those basically plenty of um, wrong decisions around, I don't know, um, building business around paying for, for something that, so basically, when I started my financial journey, I was 30K in debt around business. That, that's where I realized that I need to do something differently. Okay. Uh, and, and yes, as I said, um, first things first, uh, I needed to, um, uh, to say to myself that I was wrong, that not every decision was a good, was a good decision at that time. And maybe there were some rushes not needed rushes that actually bought me in that situation. So it's not the economic situation. It's my background. So uh, what, what I see now and uh, what I teach people is that we don't, we don't want to jump to, I don't know, well, cryptocurrencies or in terms of investing or something like that if we don't understand them. So first we need to understand the basics and then jump into that opportunity. And it's the same aspect with money or with business, everything. And then you also mentioned about budgeting and how important that is. But people probably 
either don't have the knowledge or they're not willing to do that. So what would be your advice to people in terms of budgeting? Especially women, we don't want to speak about saving money at all, about budgeting. We always say, um, so me and my partner agreed that I will be a mom and a housekeeper, wife and everything, and he will handle money, which is the idea I don't like. Uh, so how to actually speak about budgeting or how to start budgeting? First is to recognize your habits. I always start uh, with three key aspects in mind. So one, one is definitely recognizing the needs and the wants. Uh, second is de definitely getting to know your expenses. This one is a little bit hard in the beginning. So I like to split expenses into 20 categories so that we can actually uh, decide and make savings in maybe one or two per month, not 10. I'm always saying, we don't want to lower the costs, the expenses too much. We always want to increase the income. So basically it's a, it's a mental shift. And what I realized also, especially with my clients who don't have enough money, who don't have enough money to cover monthly expenses, where would be the saving part? I will always say to them, if you start with, I don't know, $20, $30, it doesn't matter. What matters is creating the habit plus, there is one mental shift that we do, well, what we send to the universe. When we are able to save $20, $30, $100, it doesn't matter. And we do it monthly, cons consistently. What happens is that we say to the universe, I don't have enough, but I can still save. So I, I, I don't have a lot, but I can still save. And so we are basically focusing on, I want more of it. Whenever we are saying, I don't earn enough, I cannot cover monthly expenses, what we do, we send the message to the universe, I don't want to be poor, but everything happens for me to be poor. That's the basically mental shift. And that's one key focus I'm also um, talking about when, when teaching my students. You talk about the want and need. I've mm -hmm. only heard a lot about that topic in particular, and a lot of the YouTubers you know, mm -hmm. like to discuss that particular topic. And then I think there's a rule of thumb, 20, 30, 50, or something like that. But the key thing is, right, I think as someone said, personal finance is 20% knowledge, 80% behavior. A lot of the times people kind of blur the lines between wants and needs. And it's particularly a problem in the United States. You're based in Slovenia? Yes, I'm in Slovenia, and this is in Europe. Uh, but yeah, the problem is the same. I have one great technique. Maybe I can share it with the yeah. audience. So um, this consists out of four words. So uh, new L is so like new life would be the acronyms for these four words. And it is uh, basically N as need, E as is, uh, W as want, and L as, uh, just give me a second to, to translate into my head. Uh, so L would be love. So what does that mean? And then I give my clients um, an issue, an exercise to, to basically uh, do this whenever they go shopping. Some, let's say, unnecessary things, or let's say you, you go and shop on Amazon and you see plenty of things. Amazon is like a, a big thing for our wallet. Uh, so whatever we see, we feel like it's a must. We need to have this now. Of course, all the marketing is creating that is created that we really need to have this first today. And then I go, okay, four questions. Do I really need this? So would this specific purse, let's say it's the red one, would really would it really make it easier for me? Maybe I I just need that for my perfect dress, or is or is just the one that I like. So this is the E part, will that ease my life for me? So I go and uh, take my wardrobe, uh, ch check the clothes, if it matches my, my um, needs. Uh, then I go to W, so do I really want this purse? Of course, otherwise I would go away from it as soon as it gets there. And do I really love it? And people always, always ask me, what is the difference between want and love? And I always explain this 
um, in the situation of a three or four year kit. So when you go to the grocery store with the kit, they all want uh, candles, chocolates, everything. But if you say to, to your kid, uh, choose one or two, he, he or she will not be able to, to choose everything from that store. So that is the difference between love and want. And then I always say to my clients and to myself also, give yourself 24 hours of time. So 24 hours or three days maybe later is the time that gives you something to think so that you come out of ratio, not from emotions, from heart. So after 24 hours, if you have all the yeses for all the questions above, then yes, if the dress or purse is still there, that's, then it's meant for you. So basically that is how you handle your emotional spending or unwanted spending. Yeah, that's very helpful. That's a good uh, acronym to remember. Yeah, yeah new life. And yeah, actually yeah. this is new life. When you, when you don't allow emotions or you have a bad day or something like that, and you don't allow that to make your money disappear, you have the control over, over money. And that's the point. I always say either you control your money or the money controls you. Very true. Besides that acronym and that very helpful tactic, do you have some other key principles or strategies that can help people transition from financial chaos to becoming proficient money manager? Yeah. Financial well, manager? Mm -hmm. I always say uh, keeping your money safe is an easy way. It's not, it's not about 20, 30, 50 rule or 20, 80 rule. Basically, there is one basic rule around money. We always need to pay ourselves first. But that doesn't mean for shopping. That means that what, whatever income I get or wage or salary I get, I try to deduct 10% immediately for my futures, for my future. And that needs to go into investments. So basically it's not about uh, saving money for vacation or saving money for new car. No, it's saving money for my future. And when you get that pattern, again, it's not, it's totally, uh, it, it doesn't matter if you save 20 per month, 30, 50, 100, but what it matters is creating a habit. So whatever that comes to my account, I try to deduct 10%. Or when I had my 40, uh, four uh, hour daily salary, I deducted maybe 5%, not 10. So it's not necessary to start with 10. It's necessary to start creating the habit. Very helpful. So you talk about investing, right? Mm -hmm. What would be your recommendation of how to invest? I think you mentioned a little bit about you have to understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other tips that you want to share in terms of investing? I always say investing needs to be simple, needs to be uh, boring. So invest, investing and trading, these are two different categories. So trading, cryptocurrencies trading, this is speculation behind. So every forex trading or whatever we do that we need to uh, check analysis, to check the tables all the time, that means we are trading. Investing means that we put money away into some uh, long-term investing. I usually, I like to teach about index funds. Uh, so we are speaking basically about uh, long-term investments. This is the Warren Buffett's investments portfolio uh, and I always share with my clients also which kind of index funds and specifically which ones to invest in so they need to be of course secure for 20 and more years or 10 and more years um, they need to have some uh, specifics so it's important to know to which ones to invest but I always say if financial industry would tell people this nobody would work for 40 years and that's the ease of investment because investment is really easy, is simple, is for women who don't want to speak about money. And it takes me, who am, so I, who am teaching the investments, it takes me around, I don't know, four to five hours per year. So my clients, they, they do this on a, let's say, quarterly or half year basis, two times per year. And they need 30 minutes of time, their time, not more. Mm -hmm. And everything else is basically just, everything else will happen uh, because of compounding. 
Yeah. And that's the beauty of investing. Of course, we don't want to wait 20 years. That's why we all teach about some um, stocks, some uh, single stocks, or maybe some like 10 portion of portfolio to go to go into cryptocurrencies or real estate. But the majority, 50% of my money goes directly into long term investing. Okay. Can you talk about what type of index fund um, that you usually recommend to your clients? Do, they, do you tailor depending on the person's situation or is it pretty much the same? No, it's pretty much the same. Um, yes, um, the situation goes from, from their goals, of course. Uh, but basically the idea is that index funds needs to be, so need, they need to cover as much companies as possible. So I'm talking about biggest funds here uh, not not the small ones because the small ones who have let's say 50 companies inside they are very risky in terms of 20 years the ones that have 500 like sp 500 or nasdaq or vanguard so basically the the most known index funds yeah s p 500 is definitely very popular and that's the one that warren buffett yeah. recommends yeah. to a normal person right that's definitely kind of the gold standard. Can you share a success story of a client who approached you and trying to figure out this financial situation for themselves and how did you help them? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, I recently made a little pivot in my business. So I started to help athletes, athletes who basically have lots of success, but Still not uh, not the way like NBA player or some biggest players. So some in between players who would be able to earn enough to cover for their whole life situation. But of course, they don't know how to handle money. And uh, this couple, so um, he is a um, volleyball player or something like that, a Slovenian volleyball player who was playing abroad in Europe. And while playing abroad, of course, uh, they needed to disappear from Slovenia in terms of financial, uh, so in terms of tax legislation. And after three years of being there, they received a notice from uh, Slovenian financial office that they are in debt for, I don't know, 10K. Uh, so basically, the story is that they were in debt around 50K in euros. Uh, and everything is, is because um, when you when you have a contract with a, with a club, they they agree to pay you some uh, salary, but they don't pay taxes for you. And this person didn't know. So uh, with my help, we established the the right habits. So they started to pay off debt, and um, of course investing at the same time. Uh, and yeah, they, they lowered the debt in six months for, let's say, a 30 to 40 percent. Great. So what areas it sounds like there are a lot of different aspects mm -hmm. that you help your clients with. You talked about budgeting, you talked about this tax situation. Mm -hmm. What other areas do you cover in your service? Um, I always, so I'm always focused on budgeting, uh, to lead the, so I want to lead my customers from budgeting, from cows to calm and the calm comes with investing into the right, uh, type of, uh, stocks and index funds. Uh, but of course I, I speak with a lot of people who have debt, of course, mortgages, uh, especially us people who have two mortgages maybe some student loans also and uh, there is one specific i always like to teach that whatever type of mortgage or uh, loan we have it's imp important to start investing as soon as possible because investments by themselves will cover our debts so we don't need to lower the debts or to um, to to put the debts into zero before we start investing no because investments will pay off our debts. That's interesting because I heard different schools of thoughts mm -hmm. about that, right? I think one critical mm -hmm. aspect is what is the interest rate? Because there are some really, really high um, interest rate, especially credit card debt. I heard a lot of people would recommend at least pay off those debts first. And mm -hmm. then some of the lower interest debt, like mortgage or student loan, mm -hmm. you can wait because maybe your investment return will be higher than that. And like you mm -hmm. say, you can cover 
the of course that, that's why i always start from the perspective of expenses so mm -hmm. if I see that my clients have lots of expenses, uh, so with the, the, the expensive credit cards, of course, we need to lower them down, down as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. But I also want, in terms of pay myself first, I want them to deduct, even if it's uh, a set five, ten dollars per month, it doesn't matter. I want them to establish the habit while already, um, so while already removing that. Yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, what happens is, yes, we can pay off debt, but we still don't know how to handle money. And there is a reason why we came to that debt. And we will make it happen once again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a good Until point. Until we do the, the, the change in our head, everything else will be the same, basically. Mm -hmm. So a couple of follow-up questions on that. One is, how do you usually obtain your clients? How do you market your services? Can you talk about that? Uh, so I am so in Slovenia. I decided to join one group of professions who are helping basically each other out. So this this is basically my marketing from mouth to mouth. Mm -hmm. um, I I have my um, show weekly show. Uh, of course, I have my email list. Everything in between. Uh, but mostly, I would say people come because of recommendations. Okay. Because in terms of finances is. is we cannot trust anyone. There are so many gurus out, out there and so many marketing, I don't know, podcasts and everything that people just don't know who to trust anymore. Yeah. That's why I decided I don't want to be one of them. I want to go maybe different way around. Yeah, that makes sense. And are your clients mostly based in Slovenia or across the world? Uh, some are based in Slovenia, some are based in US because um, I like to speak a lot on, on, post, on podcasts or I'm, I was also joining some summits during the, the summer. So uh, yes, plenty, plenty of um, students uh, are coming from US, US also. Cool. And what is your typical structure of services? Is it like coaching and do you meet with them regularly? How, how does that usually happen? It's like mastermind, so we, we meet regularly uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, we have basically uh, the mastermind consists of eight modules and it takes 12 weeks for that. So after those 12 weeks, they still have my support for next three months. And in between, because I said we have eight modules and 12 weeks. So in between, we have also Q&A so that I can basically see where their problem is. My goal is always to, to help my clients, so I'm giving my knowledge away. So also when I speak to athletes, when they have, let's say, a um, bigger amount of money, uh, I, I always say I'm not a financial advisor. So my mission, my goal is not to take your money away to pay me so that I will invest for you. No, I want everybody to understand investments first, so to give them some portion of theory. And then I give them my port portfolio, so with names, so that they can actually start investing on their own. So I always say uh, working with me is, from my perspective, the only course or mastermind or coaching about money you will ever need. Nice. So those modules that you mentioned, they are one-to-one -one or are they courses? Uh, yeah, for, for US, it's definitely one-to-one. Uh, for Slovenia market, because it's much smaller market, uh, it's digital product. Okay, okay. And we all know that financial literacy is an ongoing process, right? And then you mentioned that all they need to know, they can learn from you. But how, how do you ensure that they will stay motivated and continue after they use your service? Uh, that's why I always like to, to do mindset changes. So mindset is the key thing around changing habits, whatever habit we, we would take. So it's not about me giving them some theory, but they see the results in those three months already. They see how they are able to, to save something for their future. So, and that's what motivates them. And um, they also get the knowledge because what I always say is that we are probably the first generation and our kids specifically 
uh, where money is really much much needed topic to cover. So we are not learned about money at school, not here in Europe, not in US. And there is a reason why, because I said in the beginning, if we would learn this uh, magic, basically the simplicity of finance, nobody would work for 40 years. And of course, um, industry doesn't want that, that for us. While we do want that for us, that's the key thing here. So uh, yeah. I would always say the inner motivation here. So I, I always build the inner motivation. Of course, we start with building a big goal, with setting up a big goal, not the small one. Because I always say, if we set a small goal, we will stay in our comfort zone. If we set a big goal, we will try, maybe in a few months, we will try and save as much as possible because we have a big goal for future. My next question is, you talked about the financial goals. Do you also encourage them to think about after they got out of their financial chaos situation, what they should strive for? Yeah, definitely. That's one big portion of my goal. So uh, I have, so I'm not teaching about goals on smart method or something like that. This is, this is very easy. I have one better method uh, here, which is basically again, uh, consisting of questions. And when you get the answers and the action plan for those small steps, then it's much easier because it's, I always say it's not about the goal. It's about our direction where we want to live, to go towards. So it's not about achieving, I don't know, $1 million. It's about $1 million will, will allow me to, I don't know, leave my job, live in a beautiful house by the sea or something like that. And that's why people try to do that. And what about you for your own company, for your own business? What is your goal in the long term? Uh, my long-term goal is definitely to help out. So long-term goal in terms of five years is to help out 600 people to change their financial life and family life uh, to the better one. Um, of course, I have number goals also, but I always think from, from the perspective of what do I want to achieve? What do I want to become? What do I want to see? So those kind of goals. So if let's say I like to travel, of course, <laughs> as any woman do. Uh, so my goal is um, I would like to travel three times per year with the family and stuff like that. Mm, yeah, that's very nice. So specific goals for, for different uh, objections, I would say. And then we also know that the finance world is evolving, right? And recently I've heard a lot of people actually talking about is there a bubble for the S&P 500 index? Because a lot of people have heard about it and then a lot of people have put their retirement accounts in S&P 500. Even though I also agree that this is probably the best investment strategy out there for now, it might change at some point, we don't know. So how do you stay informed and stay updated in these um, changes? Do you mm -hmm. learn from, I think you mentioned you attend summit and what yes. are some of the other learning strategies? Okay. So before I started teaching about money, uh, I went into some serious education with different type of people. So from once I'm learning about crypto, from second, I'm learning about uh, long-term investing and then I, I dig deeper. So mm -hmm. I'm not stick to one person only because yes, everything changes. Uh, but what I like, I, I heard it on one education and I, I like it a lot and maybe it's the time to share. Uh, so how, how to see the um, index fund? Basically, it doesn't matter it is, if it is S, S, SP500 or NASDAQ or Vanguard, whatever fund it is. So how, how to actually see it from the perspective of a woman? So I always say it's like going on the market, going shopping. We go on the market to buy fresh vegetables. So uh, we have a stand, right? And on the stand, we have, let's say, 30, 30 different sorts of vegetables. And fruits. So we have cucumber, tomato, uh, oranges, apples, and stuff like that. So each one of those represents one company. Let's say when we speak about Nasdaq fund, it means there are Google, Amazon, Tesla, um, 
Alibaba. So plenty of those. So technology, technology um, companies, basically. And now imagine if any of those disappears. Let's say Apple disappears in 20 years from now. What will happen to that stand? So yeah, in a short term basis, of course, it will lower down the stands. So there will be much less customers to that stand. But in the long term, they will find a solution. They will find a different company again, which will join that stand. And it's totally the same in the field of stocks and in the field of companies, because those companies, of course, some will, will go away. Some will, but always until we, we will, so until the, the, the people will strive for excellence and be always better and better in terms of, let's say, a technology or robotics or something like that, there will always be some new companies that will join the market. And till, till this is happening, there is no worry. The only worry I always say would be if everything disappears. But if everything disappears, then we don't have economy anymore. Because this is the real market behind. This is not cryptocurrencies, which we could believe or not. This is the, the real segment behind. It's very well said. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like it's a self-cleansing process, right? Even though maybe some older great companies disappeared, newer ones will always come and mm -hmm. take the place, maybe even better. Um, and yes, maybe one thing to add. Um, of course, we never go with one index fund and put all the port portfolio inside. So I like to teach about having three to six index funds for a specific period. And so within those, we can always do some changes and we are on the safe way. And still that is, let's say 50% of our portfolio goes into index funds. The other 20 goes into single stocks like Google or Microsoft or something like that. And then we have the, the small portion that goes into crypto or uh, gold or something like that. So it's basically diversification that, may, that is making us safe. Ah, interesting. Okay. And do you also teach how to rebalance based on how each um, class is performing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, if needed. But uh, the point here is that we, we, we want to see the changes in, let's say, uh, five years. Yes, of course, uh, now, during the recession or whatever the situation right now currently is, there is... Uh, so the things are lowering down, but they will go up. And whenever they go up, they reach new heights. Mm -hmm. So it's not time for panic. I always teach. So um, when we come to the point of start to teach about investing, uh, I always start with the theory part. And the theory always says it's the circle. So it is always ups and downs as in life. So mm -hmm. when there are downs uh, for the investments, who knows? how to handle it, it's a great uh, situation to buy, not to sell. Mm -hmm. We just don't want to, to buy at, at their heights. We want to buy on their lows and then just do the magic. And what is your view on crypto and gold? Because I've heard a lot of very disparaging views on those investments. Uh, gold? Uh, yeah, specifically this year, gold is like a great investment. But over the long term, I would say I see gold as as a safety net. So putting 10% is on gold is like, yeah, great thing to, to cover uh, inflation and stuff like that. But for me, it's not the right type of investment. It won't bring us much. It's bad, only those kind of years that are really specific the gold uh, explodes um on the other hand we have crypto uh yeah crypto is definitely the new technology behind i would say that if crypto would disappear it would already disappear so crypto is here we we need to know that but what i don't like i don't like people and what i see now students are investing a lot in crypto uh, which is not good it's not safe at all. Uh, and I always say, we don't know when we read something that I don't know some crypto millionaire, 30 year old, uh, they were, they were able to get, I don't know, million dollars. 
Yes, but we don't know their background. We don't know. Maybe they are um, scientists. Maybe they are. So we don't know what is the behind scene. And that's why I always say I like to invest in crypto, in crypto but I would stick to my 10% of portfolio, not more. Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe it will go slower, but of course it will be safer. And for me, safety is, is the, the most important thing in terms of investment. And do you pick and choose which crypto? to invest in? Is it only Bitcoin or mm, other crypto? I normally, I normally advise my, my client not to invest in Bitcoin at all because mm -hmm. Bitcoin is too big. So mm -hmm. when we have, I don't know, 10% of our portfolio and this would be, I don't know, $1,000. It's basically we won't do a change if you, if we invest in, if we invest $1,000 in Bitcoin. Because basically we can only buy, I don't know, 0 0.10, maybe. Maybe it's better. In, in So uh, this is the way where I I see how, how my clients are working. So if they have 50K, it's totally different situation when they have 1K or 2K. Yeah. But the, the, the less money they have for crypto, uh, the less I'm advising Bitcoin. Okay. But of course, I like to stick within uh, biggest coins, but not Bitcoin, maybe Ripple or Ethereum or Solana or something like that. So ADA. So the coins that have some background already, but they're not so so expensive to buy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. And then one thing I also want to touch on is um, the financial education for children. You have three children you mentioned. I have two myself. What are you teaching your kids about finances? I always teach them. So my, my kids receive some um, pocket money from their grandparents. And from, from the age of, I don't know, four or five, I always teach them to, to save, basically to save for future. Uh, and I know my son, who when he was four years old, he said, Mama, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Uh, I, I received five, five euros or dollars and I need to save one. What? Why? <laughs> and then I just said, don't worry. This is for your future because I again want to establish a habit. And then I always, this is one another aspect which is very beneficial when we uh, want to, to expect, uh, accept new habits around money. I always pay myself first on one side on, and on the other side, I have my play money. So let's say 5% for my kids. So if they receive $5, they put one one dollar away and they receive 50, 50 pounds, so 0 0.5 dollar per, I don't know, candles. And then once per month, we go and they buy candles, whatever they want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, and this is when you ask me about the motivation, this is my motivation. So I always allow myself to spend, I don't know, 50 euros for just anything, which is not a need. So it's not uh, a massage. Let's say it's not a therapeutic massage. It's, I don't know, I, I go out with my friends or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a reward for myself for doing the right things without, with money. Yeah. So I always want to teach about not just saving, 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 because this is the hard way. I want to teach us to, to spend, to spend with the idea of I know how to handle money and to to get more money, basically, in terms of knowledge and everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think we touched on that a little bit, but you know, there's the saving side, there's also increasing the income side. Do you teach people how to try to increase their income? Maybe not always from the job. Sometimes that's possible too through promotion and switching jobs. A lot of times I hear about building a side business or doing a side hustle or something like that. Do you teach that as well? This is inside my mastermind and we have one module for increasing the income. But I always start from the perspective. It's not about the job. It's not about the promotion. It's not about the side hustle. Mm -hmm. um, it can be even simpler, especially for the mid mid age uh, ladies let's say um, gardening or um, I don't know, cleaning, cleaning the wardrobe for, for a friend or something like that. So it can be very easy to receive extra, I don't know, 100, 200, 300 dollars. So I'm not speaking about 
working for 14 hours because what I learned in terms of entrepreneurship, it's not easy to start side hustle and to succeed in it. And we don't want to work 12 hours or 14 hours daily to have extra $500. It's not point. It's not the point in that. Uh, So I always come from the perspective of someone who is not tech savvy or maybe it's around 60 already. So they don't know about computers. So I I simplify the process. Mm, That's very helpful. Yeah. Great. So two more questions for you. Do you have a book recommendation? Uh, I always say I started with Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Dad Poor, Poor Dad, which is, uh, mm-hmm. I had those four books, uh, for his books, I had them on my uh, nightstand, and I was basically reading them month by, uh, not month, night by night, for four months, I was basically, I went into details. Uh, when I understood what is the difference between um, expenses, um, liabilities. So basically, the the key principles. Then, under, then I understood what does it mean to pay myself first. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I always say for a beginning, for a beginner, reach that reach that poor that is like wow book. Yeah, I certainly was influenced by that book a lot too. All right, great. So last question: Where can people find out more about you? Uh, so they can book a call with me. So it's a 30 minute strategy session so that I can see if I can really help them out mm-hmm. because I want to, I want them to know basically, uh, if, if I'm the right teacher for them. Uh, so if, if you are, if you would allow me, I would leave my, um, handles here, uh, about the calendar call. Otherwise, uh, yeah, because I mostly speak in Slovenian on my social media, I'm in Slovenian, so um, this won't be much of a help for them. Um, I don't have my own book yet, mm-hmm. yet. Um, but yeah, they can always send me an email and I will be glad to answer them. Okay, great. Do you have a website or a Facebook account? Or like you said, it's in Slovenian, so probably. It's in Slovenian, everything is in Slovenian, uh, so it, it won't be much of a help. Uh, so I suggest uh, whoever listened to us today and feels mm-hmm. like I'm simplifying enough and I could teach them something, they can the, book a call with me. It's free one, it's not sales one, it's just getting to know each other and to see if I can basically help them out. I can link the email or whatever you provide okay. in the show notes. Then I will send you the details and then you can link it to the to your audience. Great. Well, thank you so much, Maya, for coming on the show. It's a very interesting conversation. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Um, I always enjoy speaking and sharing my knowledge with audience. So uh, thank you again. That's great. Oh,